Hi everyone. Now, in this video, in this series of video, I'll be discussing the concept of accuracy and precision again, which I talked about in the previous video. But I want to focus specifically on how we can quantify the error that we have in our precision and, and our accuracy. And we're going to do this by using some statistical quantities. Okay? So just as a reminder, in the last video, in the previous section, I talked about two ways that scientists normally use to indicate reliability or indicate confidence, okay? So the more reliable your measurement is or the more confident you are of your data or your measurement, then of course the more you can make conclusions based on, the, on those data, okay? So if you want to say, for example, that cancer cells um, are growing when you put them in an environment that contains a lot of sugar, you better be sure that your data or your measurements really show strongly and they're done correctly, that they're precise and they're accurate, the data that you collect, okay? And as a reminder of the definitions of each of these terms, accuracy means how close the data is, right, each of the data points or the average of the data points to an actual um, value of that particular measurement which is called a true value and precision is usually the more important ones in science because uh, a lot of times as we'll talk about in, in a little bit true value is hard to determine if you're the first person to make the measurement but precision you can always make sure of because you're going to be doing multiple measurements of the same thing to convince yourself that the numbers are really correct right so if you make repeated measurements, then you want to make sure that those repeated measurements are really close to each other or they're close to the average, okay? Um, now let's talk about accuracy and precision in the context of a data. So for example, here's three different students. Let's think about three different scientists, for example. And they're making measurements of masses of a particular object, for example, and they're making the measurement four times for each student. As you notice here, the idea of a, a you know, just look at this uh, graph for now, right? This is the four trials. In each of the trial, you record a certain mass. The mass is indicated by the number on the top of the, um, on the bar. And there's a true value as uh, it happens with this particular measurement. We know the true mass of this uh, block is 10 grams. And so student A makes these measurements. And there's two things you want to look at. The first thing, of course, is just precision. And precision is fairly hard to look at, which is you just want to see whether the bars are all the same or not, right? If they're all the same, that means that the measurements uh, are precise because um, then they're repeatable, okay? So you can tell that if you look at all these three students, first student is not precise, right, because it's all over the place. The second and third student are precise because they both have values that are about the same from one measurement to the next. Okay, so you don't even need to know what those numbers are, but you can kind of tell that the bars are about, you know, um, not changing by much when going from first measurement, second, to third, and fourth. Now, what about accuracy? Well, accuracy has to do with comparing either each of these data points to the true value or the average of the data points to the true value. And what you notice here, um, you can tell the average is actually calculated for you here uh, for the um, all the each of the students' measurement. The averages of all of these numbers is calculated. And we'll talk about the calculation of the average in a second, the mean. But basically, you just add all of these four numbers and divide it by four. You get these numbers, 10.13, which of course is a little bit different than 10 which is the true value. Uh, second student, it's 9.79, also different than 10. And then third student is 10.01, which is the closest to 10. Okay, So just by comparing these numbers, these averages to the true value, you can tell that student C has the best accuracy. And uh, student, both student A and B have uh, some issue with their accuracy. Okay, Now, these, this is a good illustration of, of what you normally see in a you know, lab result from students. Sometimes you get students who are just completely, um, you know, they, they have really bad techniques, for example, so their measurements is imprecise. 
and because of the imprecision in the measurement the result will never be accurate okay so you always get something that's off if you have to first make sure that you're precise before you can think about accuracy the second uh, student you know they they're very careful so they make sure that they um, make these mass measurements carefully so they're very repeatable in other words the measurements are very precise but there seems to be some kind of issue with either the balance that they're using or something that they're doing consistently across the measurements right so this is of course what we refer to as a systematic error right in the previous video remember we talked about this idea of systematic and random error so systematic error you can tell here because it's affecting the values uh, of the measurements all equally which is to the downside okay so the true value is the blue line all the measurements are less than the true value so maybe what the student forgot to do is to tear the balance like I mentioned in the previous video so then as a result you get this effect of uh, less than the true value the third student makes sure that um, the measurements are done carefully which is repeatable um, from one to the next and also to make sure that they use the instrument appropriately and use appropriate technique okay so that's really what you're shooting for but don't be surprised if when you're making measurements you'll see one of these two okay if you can achieve this that's that's the first step okay you really want to get at at least being precise okay now let's talk about this idea of repeated measurement we just we just show this data right in the previous slide where each student makes four measurements of the same thing again and again right and this is very common in an actual scientific lab you really just you, you never actually let me just say that you never make just one measurement okay because you know you don't know what, what might happen in one measurement okay it might have been that you forgot to do something or you know you forgot to add something or whatnot and you wouldn't know that you made a mistake unless you make repeated measurement so you know for for example in a biology lab generally speaking if you're making measurements you would make at least three times it's called triplicate measurements so you would at least make it three times and then you would see are the measurements fairly close to each other or not in other words you're trying to determine precision so one of the first things you need to do is just look at the precision you want to make sure that the measurements are highly precise in other words you have very low error in your precision and how do you determine the error we'll talk about that in a second the second point of course is you want to make sure that's accurate but accuracy as I mentioned earlier is a little bit hard to determine because accuracy has to do with comparing your result with somebody else's result right which is called a true value so if you're the first person to make the measurement which is often the case if you're working in a research lab you'll be the first person to make that property measurement let's say you know the size of cancer cell in a sugar environment you'll be the first person to ask that question so then there's nobody else who've made that measurement in the past so you can't really compare it so there's no accuracy measurement per se but it's possible that you can ask another lab member to make that same measurement and then uh, hopefully then you can compare it with somebody else but generally what you want to make sure is that there's precision uh, in terms of you know the, the how, how good your measurements are how reliable your measurements are okay now there's a, a couple of uh, statistical quantities that will be relevant here when we're trying to determine how precise and how accurate our measurements are we can calculate these three different statistical quantities and I'll show it to you in an example later on but the one that we often calculate is called the mean which is just a average uh, and it's arithmetic average which is basically the fancy word of just saying that you have 10 measurements you'll take the data point for each of those 10 add them all up together and divide it by 10 okay if you have four then you take all of them and divide by four that was the measure the average that was calculated in a, a slide the slide earlier about the masses and the d three different students median is a little bit more uh, complicated it's basically the number that is right exactly in the middle in what we call a numerically ordered data set and what that means is just you have data sets for example earlier we had these data sets right we would order them from smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest either way it doesn't really matter basically you're trying to go from small to large and then the number that's exactly right in the middle would be what we call the median okay so in this particular case for example if you look at these numbers right here 
nine uh seven nine 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 two uh, 1031 and 1049 right if you order it from small to big that's gonna be how it is and the numbers that's right in the middle is basically these two numbers right here because this is there's an even number of data points here so what you do then you take the average of these two numbers 992 and 1031 divided by 2 that's your median